Alex, thank you very much for joining us here on Sirius XM. You look absolutely buzzing. You don't, actually. Now you do, because you, you smiled at that. But are you still on a bit of a, a high after Melbourne? Yeah, no, it feels good. It feels like um, well, we've had two weeks in between, so the, the, the buzz has, has died off a little bit. But I still look back at it as a as a very good race, and you know it was a it was a pretty special moment. Uh, you know, after thinking about how it went, um, yeah, it was a it was a it was more. It makes me smile more because of how we did it. It was just so out of the ordinary. Not only was it out of the ordinary though, you were quick. Like it wasn't like you kind of something crazy had to happen. You just genuinely drove quickly on very old tyres. I mean, what's it done for your confidence in this team and this car? I guess. Yeah, and I would say that, you know, people pointed out, you know, it was, a, it was lucky that, you know, Lance was in the way and all that kind of thing. We were fast, you know, we, we generally pulled away from people. We were pulling away from people in much quicker cars like, normally um, on much fresher tyres. So uh, as, as a team, as for me and myself as well, it gives us a glimmer of hope and it shows that you know, in the right places, in the right way, there is lap time in the car. We just need to exploit it. We need to find it more. We need... To, the balance to feel more like it did in Melbourne because you know during that race the car felt, felt amazing um, which isn't always the case there's a it's a bit more of a, a diva to get right um, and so if we can hit that stride more often then uh, you know hopefully more points to come if I'm being honest having watched the car sort of trackside at testing at times and at the first few races it has looked a real handful to drive is that the first time you've actually seen that positive aspect of it we, we always have moments during a weekend there's always some moments that we we feel good in the car and it's normally in qualifying when things start to come good when you take away the fuel loads and put sticky tires on it of course everything starts to feel a bit better but but for us it's more than most people and um, uh, I would say in all three instances in qualifying we, we should have easily been in the top 15 I mean we were one time in Bahrain but then uh, Jeddah there was a red flag I think and um, and then we had uh, Melbourne, which was another red flag. So th there's there's glimpses of it, and um, it's not like we're scratch scratching our heads, not knowing why the car is tricky to drive. We know the areas we need to focus on. We know the limitations of the car, which makes it much easier than as uh, in feedback and and for the guys back at the factory to know what to work on talking about things like that though in terms of developing a car you were doing some of that last year but you weren't getting the benefit of then getting to go out and race it over a race weekend how much are you enjoying being back on the grid i know you you probably won't speak ill of last year but just how good does it feel this year yeah being locked up in a dark room for a while doesn't feel great it's not great for the soul um and uh um your your uh, your time the days where you you go in and it's dark because you, you're in at 6, 7 a.m. and then you come out and it's dark because it's 10, 11 p.m. Uh, along behind me, which, I, which I'm very thankful for. <laughs> I mean, you never know. <laughs> Maybe I get called back. But, uh, but it is great. And, um, you know, you, you, I, feel, I felt part of the team last year uh, at Red Bull. But even more so now, you know, you're, you're really you're driving the team. You're being a, being a driver in, in what with... We have 850 people more or less at Williams. It's, it's a big, it's a big deal, you know. And, and we carry a lot of people on our shoulders. And to be able to give a good result like Melbourne or whatever it may be, um, it's it feels uh, it's really satisfying. You talk about the long days in dark rooms um, from last year. Sounds like sounds like something else, but. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll focus on the sim work, um, but like more importantly, like what did you really learn from it in terms of was there a lot you could take from it from a driving perspective, or did it actually just fuel your motivation to get back to where you are now? Both. Um, it fuels your motivation. It fuels your hunger more and more to be at because I was I was going to the racetracks too. So you're just watching the cars go around whilst you're sitting in the in the garage. Was was uh, it wasn't it was uh, tricky, um, but at the same time. You can't really work when you're driving too much because you're 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 not. It's not the same. You can't really improve what you're doing behind the wheel and your hands. You know, simulator is great and all, but it it still has a restart button, and it still um, misses that final bit. You know, where you feel it on your, in your bum and through your back what the car's doing. 
So um, what I could improve on was uh, myself as, as a team player and, and how can I develop the car in the right way because there's there's the right way there's a there's an efficient way to do things and it was having the right conversations with the right people you know maybe is it the guys who do the aerodynamics is it the guys that do the vehicle dynamics or the suspension or whatever you know is it um is it the engineers themselves and um, understanding how teams work and how to get lap time out of a car is a whole different ball game and i think most people see drivers as drivers who they look at the drivers and they see how's he doing against his teammate oh he's a better driver but there's a huge amount to that you know someone like, like let's use Lewis for an example he's clearly very good at feedback and developing the car which is a skill quality that people don't really acknowledge or, or put towards an attribute towards a driver and I feel like um, that was something which I, I had to really work on um, I feel like if you there's a reason why the why a top team is always at the top but it's it's also a lot down to driver input and how he's pushing the team in the right places so um, I tried to 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 really understand that role um, I feel like I've I've not I've definitely not perfected it but I, I've done a good step forwards is that something as well that you think you've maybe surprised Williams with that you've been able to come in and, and because you're still a young driver and you're seen as one of you know a future uh, star not n not only just right now but do you think you've been able to come in and actually stamp your authority a bit on the team in that way um i believe i have been able to do to do a decent job of it um, i wouldn't call myself a, a sensei or anything like that um, but uh, i do carry that knowledge from another car as well which helps a lot because you you, you get a whole different angle of what cut you know how a car behaves and um, also how how a culture in a, in a team can be different or um, just how how things work so um, I've been able to really offer that side of things um, and of course it's almost up to me to just to decide is it in a better way or in a worse way and, and how can we help that how can we improve and bring everything together um, and I've enjoyed that bit very much um, but there's obviously still work there you're in a bit of a strange situation as well though in that you are still a Red Bull driver but you're here at Williams like, how do you then approach that you know is your time being pulled slightly by both teams? Does your focus have to be still on, I need to impress Red Bull, or are you able to be fully present here? No, I would, I would say I'm a Williams driver. This year I'm a Williams driver, for sure. And um, I don't look around you know, at Red Bull. Of course, I still speak to the guys that I've worked with um, for what, three, almost three years now. But um, you know, the, the job that I do is very much here. And um, and that's, that's all I really see. I, I just see... For my own self, the best thing I can do is to do the very best job I can in in any way, and um, and I feel you know very proud to be a Williams driver, and I want to see us um, up the grid more often than we are. The fact that George came here as a Mercedes driver and, and stayed for a long time and and kind of honed his craft here, does it feel like also a place that could offer you a longer term future if there's not an opening? quickly back at Red Bull of course and you know and I and I and I, I see that very much as, as a possibility and something that I would more than happily take and I feel like uh, you know I want to 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 cement myself here and, and show the value that I can bring to the team um, off track and off and on track did I say on and off or off and off yeah. off and on <laughs> but yeah in both ways <laughs> and just finally there's a new race that's going to be on the calendar in a couple of weeks' time. Um, by the time this goes out, in a couple of days' time. Uh, li little place called Miami. How excited are you to go racing there? It's a small place, isn't it? A yeah, few, few locals around there. Um, it's a really cool, cool, exciting time. I haven't been there. Um, my girlfriend's from, from America, or she lives in America. Um, she hasn't been to, to Miami uh, until a couple of weeks ago. And she... She she was like, oh, I'm not sure, you know, people talk about it, but I'm not sure. She was a bit sceptical about it and she loved it. So um, so I'm really excited to go. I feel like uh, it's amazing to see how F1's expanding, obviously, in that market. It's always the talking point. Netflix and everything has, has, has played a big role in that. Um, but it really does feel like F1's been revitalized as a sport. And, you know, we're on a massive boom right now. Um, the only thing I'd say to that is hotels are getting expensive. <laughs> like these American, these American races we go to, it's just ridiculous. Everyone's traveling, I guess, into 
these con in, in from state to state into Florida t to watch it. The flights, the, the the costs, the ticket prices. I mean, it's ridiculous. But um, I've got my girlfriend. I got her family coming. <laughs> you know, it's not it's not cheap for me. Do we need someone to hook you up? You know, if there's anyone out there, I, I always do a plug. If there's anyone out there, I mean, the thing is, I've already booked. But um, you know, I'm I'm coming back next year. I hope. So uh, hit me up. Send me a send me a DM, and I'm. Uh, and yeah, that's it. We'll start a crowdfunder. Hashtag pray for Albon 2023. Please, guys. You know, it's been a tough year. <laughs> well, people look forward to seeing you race this year and hopefully next year too if you can afford to go to the race. Alex, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Cheers.